there, I'm Jess, and I was a bird banding intern over the summer in North Carolina. It was through the Monitoring Avian Productivity and Survivorship program under the Institute for Bird Populations. This program includes over 1,200 sites across North America and has been monitoring migration patterns, population trends, and breeding success of songbirds for over 25 years. Our station included six sites on the western side of Fort Bragg in the unique pine prairies and sandhill uplands of North Carolina. Each workday, we drove out to one of our sites, set up 10 nets at dawn, and checked them every 40 minutes for six hours. Even on slow days, that meant a lot of power walking, and some nets were harder to get to than others. So here's how these mist nets work. Let's say we have the elusive and rare pine cone warbler. It flies into the net and gets stuck in one of these slack pockets here. So we come along and we extract it carefully, and then we stick it in one of these nice cozy little bags so it'll be safe and calm while we bring it back to the truck. Once we bring the bird back to the banding station at the truck, we use all sorts of nifty tools to give it a band and record data. Here's a typical banding kit. The bands themselves are simply pressed aluminum, and they come in a variety of sizes to ensure the band stays on but doesn't harm the bird. Each band has a unique nine-digit code so we know exactly which bird we have if we recapture it. But first, we always, always check what size would be best using a leg gauge to make sure it's just right. These special banding pliers make putting on the band easy and safe. The nib opens the band and the correct size hole closes it around the leg. Once the band is on, we measure the wing, estimate its age, whether it's male or female, and finally we weigh it in a cozy tube before letting it go. The more data the better, but if at any time the bird seems stressed, we let it go immediately. Their safety comes first. By the end of the season, I banded 101 birds. I handled 163, and we had over 260 in the net. That's 38 species. Many were familiar to me, but some I had never seen before, let alone held. Everything from woodpeckers to hummingbirds, and even an endangered species. This internship was an amazing experience and a big step for me toward my goal of conducting my own research on how climate change is affecting bird migration. So if you're also interested in wildlife research or management, I highly suggest checking out the MAPS program. There's just too much about science that you cannot learn from a textbook. And internships like this are perfect opportunities to get your hands dirty. Good luck!